Hi, Bruce Merrifield here again. Uh, in this slide, I want to just review some of the key themes that will be pervading through this whole e-video clip series. Uh, one of the themes that, that I'll touch on is how do we sort of expose and examine our traditional beliefs about what it takes to succeed. So you'll see here traditional beliefs. I get my little highlighter to work. Traditional beliefs. And central to those central beliefs, I think, are, are many distributors still very product-centric, sales volume-oriented. We have all kinds of printed material about our supply lines, our, our catalogs. Uh, we have uh, sales meetings. It's all about pushing, promoting product, uh, manufacturer spiffs, volume, deals, etc. And the idea is that if we go push enough volume, then what will happen is we'll grow our sales, we'll grow our margin dollars, and because we have mythical economies of scale, more and more of that margin dollar will fall to the bottom line. Uh, those aren't necessarily true, and we'll, we'll look at those. Uh, a second key theme is instead of, of focusing on growing by sales product promotion, we're going to grow by getting a larger share of customer, and not just any customer, the right best customers and the right best niche for a, any given branch and a, a part, as part of a distribution chain. And each niche of customer will have a different service value equation. And the equation is of you know, six, seven, eight metrics that add up to uh, best total distinctive service value for that particular niche, starting with best one-stop shop assortment of items, SKU, stock keeping units, in stock. So every day, most effective fill rates for that niche compared to any of the other competitors in our space. Then, when it comes to the service we're, we're offering and even guaranteeing, how much of that service is bundled into the price of the goods they pay as opposed to unbundled and, and, and charged for fee? And this will depend on the size of the customer or the strata. Uh, small uh, customers are going to get higher average order size, unbundled freight, uh, inside sales, proactive outbound calling. They're not going to get an outside salesperson, for example. So we have to be able to define our niches, uh, segment our niches further by size, and then tune our, our service value equation. If we do that, we get something which I call nicheonomics and I'm not going to get into it, but there is a separate category on that. Also, when we go out and we provide distinctive service value, we have to know how those service elements or metrics specifically are lowering some or all of the, the, the cost, the hidden cost elements that VPs of supply chain might be looking at. So we'll talk about, you know, if, if, if customers are calling themselves vice presidents of supply chain, then in theory we should have a vice president of service value chain solutions. Once we identify uh, the niche and the service value equation, then we have a problem of execution. We have to basically get all the frontline employees, everybody really, uh, engaged to look, here's the niche we're going after, here are the most important customers in the niche, here's a service value equation we have for the niche, and so we've got to measure and improve these things until they're just every day, perfect, in your face, you know, best service value. But a lot of people are saying, well, that's fine, but what's in it for me? So uh, we're going to have to work on our improving our high-performance service ideas. A fourth concept that we'll come across is uh, what I call smart pricing. Actually, it's not my term. I put it in quotes there. I borrowed it from a friend named Brent Grover, who runs a company called Evergreen Consulting and, and provides a specific... Uh, consulting, pricing intelligence, tuning um, solution, if you will, um, because it, it turns out that when you actually analyze, uh, you know, a product that's sold to 200 different customers, what co what the customer pays for that, that product is all over the map, regardless of whether they're buying big or buying small quantities. So there's a lot of tuning that can be done as far as smart pricing when it comes to getting paid for service value. And lastly, uh, most subtly, but probably even most importantly, we can't do any of this stuff unless we have uh, line item net profit analytics. So in theory, what we have to do is build uh, uh, cost to serve models so that we can actually figure out the net profit or loss on every single line item on every single invoice, regardless of how that invoice goes through our, 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 our business, our, our, our company. 
once we have that line item net profit analytics, we can come with a P&L or a net, net profit statement on every single customer, every single item, every single supplier, et cetera. That will help us zero in on our best historic niches. We'll make our boundaries for those niches and allow us to you know, support uh, smart pricing and allow us to have much more transparent information feedback to get employees excited. Um, it, uh, it will allow us to share, uh, capture a much bigger share of, of uh, customer and customer niche. Now, what we're going to do is, is next is we're going to start basically the next, you know, umpteen slides. Uh, we'll, we'll focus on what I call supply chain building blocks of, uh, of economic value. Thanks.